All right, and we're back with a couple more examples on graphing quadratic equations. <clears throat> on the last couple of examples we did, we graphed equations of the form y equals ax squared. And now we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to add a little bit to it. Now notice we don't have ax squared. We have ax squared, and we have another constant, a number, along with the x squared on one side of the equation. So we're going to graph y equals x squared plus 1. So now we're throwing in another number, and we're going to look at kind of how this changes the graph and changes the equation, changes the values of the, um, of the quadratic equation we're working with. So once again, when we look at this, we should know that we're working with a quadratic equation because the variable x is being squared. Whenever you have a variable squared, we are, we are working with a quadratic equation. So this is not going to form a straight line. It's going to form a parabola. And we're going to look and see what this parabola looks like by picking points, picking values for x, and plugging them in, getting a y out, and then plotting those points and kind of looking at what it looks like on the graph. So I picked x's here. And again, I could have picked whatever x's I wanted to. But since I'm working with this graph, I'm going to work with negative 3 down to positive 3. Again, I don't want to pick just two points because this is not a line, and I know that because it's x squared. So I'm going to pick as many points as I, as I can, more than two, the more the better, and I'm going to go from negative 3 to positive 3. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 in first into this equation, and I have negative 3 squared, and then I'm going to add 1. Negative 3 being squared means negative 3 times negative 3. That's 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So when I plug in negative 3 into this equation, I get out 10 for y. When I plug in negative 2, I'm going to get negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4, plus 1 will be 5. When I plug in a negative 1, I'm going to get out 2. When I plug in 0, I get 1. When I plug in a positive 1, I get 2. When I plug in 2, we get 5. And plug in 3, we get 10. So you'll notice once again, kind of like with what happened with the last couple of examples, that we see some, a pattern here. And as a result, we're going to have some symmetry. So plot these points. There they are. And again, it looks like a V. But the more we plot, the more we're going to see it actually looks more like a U, which is called a parabola. So we have this parabola here. Notice it's opening up. We have a minimum here at the vertex. And we can kind of look at some of these properties. The axis of symmetry still appears to be the x-axis, or the y-axis, I'm sorry, where the equation is x equals 0. The vertex is 0, 1. Here's the vertex right there. It's at the very bottom, and that's the point 0, 1. It's a minimum because it's at the very bottom. The vertex is at the bottom of the graph, the bottom of the, the, the parabola. And the graph opens up. So that's what the equation y equals x squared plus 1 looks like when we graph it. We can take a look at another one here, and then we'll kind of compare these things. Now let's do y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. So notice again here, we're kind of adding to these equations. We're still working with the quadratic equation, and I know that because I have our variable is being squared. And then notice I have another x here. But since our variable is being squared, we're going to have a parabola. And once again, I'll pick some points. I'm going to go from negative 3 to positive 3 once again. I'm going to plug these in, and notice when I plug in negative 3 now in for x, I only, don't only plug it in right here. I'm going to have to plug it in for this x as well. So it's going to look like this once I plug in each value for x. So I have negative 3 is being squared, which is a positive 9, minus 2 times a negative 3. Negative 2 times a negative 3 is positive 6, and then I'm going to subtract 3. So if I can kind of keep that straight, I'm not so sure I can. I wouldn't need to kind of write that out. But the value that comes out of that is going to be 12. Because we essentially have 9 plus 6 minus 3. 9 plus 6 minus 3 is 12. Then I'm going to plug a negative 2 in for all those values. And when I plug a negative 2, I'm going to get 5. When I plug a negative 1, I'm going to get 0. When I plug in 0, we're going to get negative 3. When you plug in 1, I get negative 4. Plug in 2, you get negative 3. And you plug in 3, and you get 0. And all these numbers came from me actually doing the work and not just automatically knowing where these things came from. So plug in these x values, you get out these y values. Let's plot those points on the graph. And they look like this. 
notice again that because of the points that we picked it doesn't look kind of as nicely as it did before but it's nevertheless it's still good it's still a parabola it's still going to form a u looking shape this is kind of what it's going to look like here and notice now the axis of symmetry is uh, kind of harder to tell but it looks like it's about right here it appears that that is the equation x equals one not exactly very easy to tell as it was in the previous examples, but it does have an axis of symmetry nonetheless, and it appears to be x equals 1. The vertex here is 1, negative 4 is what it appears to be. And therefore, it's a minimum because of the fact that the graph is opening up. The minimum is at the bottom of the graph, and the graph is going to open or is opening up. This is all stuff that we can tell kind of by looking at the graph. Again, it's sometimes it won't be as easy to find the axis of symmetry or the vertex because it just so happens that we have plotted the vertex here, which will not always be the case. But in this case, we can kind of estimate what that looks like, and that is indeed the vertex. So to kind of summarize here, here's the stuff that we had before y equals ax squared. If the, if the equation looks like this, all of this stuff will always be true about the parabola. It will have an axis of symmetry of x equals 0. The vertex will be 0, 0. And depending upon what the value of a is, that determines if the parabola is going to open down or up and therefore have a maximum or a minimum for the vertex. Now we kind of threw in some different equations or different forms of a quadratic equation. I added in an extra c in that first example, and then we added in an extra x in the second example. And notice that those parabolas did not have the same axis of symmetry or vertex as the previous examples. So as a result of this, if you're working with an equation that looks like this, where we have ax squared and then another x, and then just some constant number hanging out in the equation as well, the axis of symmetry is going to have to be found from the graph. You're going to have to look and kind of see where is that axis of symmetry. It's not always going to be obvious what it is. The vertex will also be found from the graph. You can't just look at the equation and know what it is. It's not 0, 0 like it is if the equation looks like this. And now if a is less than 0, the parabola will open down and the vertex is a maximum. So this property here is still the same no matter what. So whenever we're working with a quadratic equation, the coefficient, the number in front of x squared, will always determine whether or not the parabola opens down, or if it's positive, it'll open up and the vertex will be a minimum. So this a here in these quadratic equations, the coefficient of x squared is very important in determining whether or not the parabola opens up or down and therefore has a vertex that is a maximum or a minimum. So a couple things we wanted to remember about quadratic equations. The variable is being squared. The variable is being squared. If the variable is squared, we're working with a parabola. And then what is the coefficient of that variable being squared? Is it positive? If it's positive, then the parabola is going to open up. If it's negative, then the parabola is going to open down. And then the axis of symmetry and the vertex we'll have to find, in some cases, by looking at the graph or just knowing if it's in this form, we kind of know what that is.